after you finish the ears, you can go ahead and set them aside. We're going to finish sewing the head. So we're going to sew the neck portion of the head. And you're going to just take one of the corners. Usually I take a, a side corner on the back. And then just take your crochet hook, go right into the stitch at the bottom of the head. And then bring up a loop with your white colored yarn. And chain one. And then just tie a knot. And then we're going to start our decrease rounds. And you can use a stitch, a um, yarn marker if you want to. Some people can just remember where they are when they reach the same point in the back, but I'm just going to put a stitch marker there. And then for the first decrease round, you're just going to make one single crochet into nine stitches. So one single crochet into nine stitches. Here's my fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So you take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, and bring up a loop, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, make one single crochet into nine stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together. And then come back when you reach the yarn marker. So after you finished that decrease round, you should have approximately 65 stitches. And I say approximately because sometimes when you're going through the seams, you may have an extra stitch or more than I do. So sometimes you'll be off by maybe one or two, but you should be pretty close to a 65 stitch count. And don't worry if you're off by one or two, that's fine. We're just slowly decreasing and forming the neck for the head. So now, just move the yarn marker up and the next decrease round you're going to be making one single crochet into eight stitches and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together so you just go right into the next stitch bring up a loop go into the next stitch bring up a loop yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together so go ahead repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into eight stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around now towards the end you may have only a few single crochet like I have about three or four single crochet remaining I just put one single crochet into any remaining stitches so now after that decrease round, I have approximately 58 stitches in the round and you can see how it's making a gradual decrease forming the neck for your dog. And we're going to make two more decrease rounds. So for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then the last decrease round is one single crochet into six stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So for mine, I finished with 46 stitches in the round. Then you're going to take and move the yarn marker up and you want to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of two rounds. So you're going to maintain your stitch count 
For mine, I ended up with 46 stitches, so you should have approximately 46 stitches. If you're off by one or two, that's fine. And then just make two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, maintaining that stitch count. After you finish your two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew the head onto the body when we make the body. So now we're just going to take and place craft stuffing into the head. So now you can see that I placed some craft stuffing into the head. Don't worry if you um, have a little bit of opening left. You can always add more craft stuffing later when you're ready to sew it onto the body. But you just want enough craft stuffing to shape the head and get ready to sew the ears in place. So the first thing that you want to do is get your ears and determine where you want to sew them onto the dog. So I used my spot as a landmark and I used the safety doll eyes. So from the safety doll eye itself, the inner part of the eye, an imaginary line up is where I placed the inner portion of the ear. And the same thing for the other ear. And I have approximately six stitches in between the ears and you have to make sure that the ears are in line. So you don't want one ear to be forward and then one ear to be back. You want them to be directly even with each other. And then once you have the placement, you're going to get your tapestry needle to sew the ear in place. So for mine, I laid the bottom portion of the ear down. So you can see how I'm laying it flat lining it up with my spot and then the portion on the lower end of the ear is in line with the inner safety doll eye but the black felt portion if you take an imaginary line up that's where the the wider part of the ear is and you want it to be on top of the head so mine's in line with the side and then once you're happy with the placement, then you can take your tapestry needle and I'm going to take and weave my loose yarn in down to where I want to sew. And I'm going to be sewing in a rectangular, a rectangle on the ear, on the bottom of the ear. So you can see how I'm just going to take and go through and then you want to make sure that you don't sew onto the pink portion. So I'm going to sew the bottom portion first and then come back with pink yarn to sew the other portion. And you want to make sure that when you sew it down that you don't see the pink on the back too. And this part will be down flat so you won't, you can sew with the pink all the way through to the head and then what's going to happen is you're going to bend the ear up to, to um, fall forward on the dog. So you're just going to take and sew with the same colored yarn all along the bottom of the ear with your tapestry needle. and just sew it in place and then you're going to get your pink yarn to come back across and sew the pink portion in place. So now I have my pink yarn and I'm just going to go and you're just going to go about one to two rows up and just sew the pink portion down to the head. And then I'm leaving a little loose yarn end and I'm going to come back out. So I'm going into the head 
and sewing the pink portion down. So you only want the lower part of the ear. You don't want to sew too much of the ear down. And this helps to secure the ear really well to the dog's head. And then you'll fold with the craft wire, you'll be able to fold the ear over to the front of the head. So you don't want to make the stitches too large on the part that's showing. So I'm going down into the head and then back up in a rectangular shape. So I went with brown here and then with pink here. Then I just ended right where I started and tied a knot and then you can just bury your loose yarn in right on the pink portion and then you can see how you can't even tell that you sewed the ear in place and then you can just cut your loose yarn end and then this is what it will look like on the back when you fold it over then after you sew the other ear on make sure you sew it the exact same way this is what it looks like on the back make sure you can't see any of the pink yarn through on the back of the the brown portion and then you can just fold the ear over on itself towards the front and then you have shapeable ears which are a lot of fun so now you can set the head aside while we make the body for the body you're going to start with your white colored yarn and you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. And then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. We're going to get ready for the magic circle. So just take your crochet hook, go under those two loops, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle just like we've done before. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to hold the base of the six single crochet with your forefinger and thumb. And then you have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one just like you've done before. If it doesn't close, you just let go and pull on the other one. This one's closing, so I'm going to go ahead and close up the loop. And again, don't worry if you don't get it completely closed. You can close it more later. Let go of the loop and grab that loose yarn end. And then pull on that. Then you're going to turn your work, because we're going to be working in rounds. And you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around. Uh, there we go. Two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round. If you need to close the center of the magic circle, just turn your work over and gently pull on that loose yarn end on the back. And then that closes up the center nicely. And then we're going to do make our increase rounds. So we're going to keep increasing the rounds until we have the size that we want for the body. So for mine, I increased, for those that already know how to do it, you're going to go in chronological order and we're going to increase all the way up to one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the tenth stitch. So for those that are still kind of new at the increasing, I want to get you started. So the first increase round is one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochet into the second stitch. And then remember to get the stitch count, I'm not going to give you the stitch count for each round because all you have to do is add six to the previous round. 
So on the previous round we had 12. If you add 6 to that, that means that when you finish this increase round, you should have a total of 18 stitches. Then, when you're ready to move up to the next round, you just take your yarn marker, move it up, and then for the next increase round, it's one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So now, you move the yarn marker up after you finish that round, and since we're going in chronological order, you know that this increase round is going to be one single crochet into three stitches. and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should be able to finish making your increase rounds. So you can see that I've already moved my yarn marker up and I'm going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then the next round will be one in single crochet into five and then two, six and then two, 7 and then 2, 8 and then 2, and then 9 and then 2. So keep making your increase rounds until you get to one single crochet into 9 stitches and then two single crochet into the 10th stitch and then come back. So now you should have 66 total stitches in the round after you finish that last increase round. Then you just take and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 35 rounds. So 35 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So whenever you pass the yarn marker, you should maintain your stitch count of 66 and just leave your yarn marker in place as you make your rounds and again you need 35 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So after you finish 35 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're going to set this portion of the body aside while we make the back portion of the body. So now you want to get the toffee colored yarn and then you're going to start with the magic circle again. So you just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're just going to bring up a loop with the yarn and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. And then, just like we've done before, you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're just going to close the magic circle. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. Then you can take and close the center of the magic circle by pulling on the loose yarn end on the back. And now we're going to make increase rounds. So you've, you're already familiar with how to make the increase rounds. We're going to do it the same way that we did for the body except we're going to make it a little bit larger. So we're going to finish one single crochet into 11 stitches 
and then two single crochet into the 12th stitch. So that's how far we're going to be increasing up to. And it's going to be in chronological order again. So the first increase round is going to be one single crochet into one stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into one stitch, two single crochet into the second stitch, and repeat that pattern all the way around. So I'm just going to make a couple more increase rounds with you because you should know how to increase by now. And again, we're increasing all the way to one single crochet into 11 stitches, and then two single crochet into the 12th stitch. So for our second increase round, remember we're going in chronological order, so this increase round will be one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around. So go ahead, finish making your increase rounds. So your next one will be one single crochet into four and then five, and then six, all the way up to one single crochet into 11 stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, and then come back. When you're finished with the last increase round of one single crochet into 11 stitches, and then two single crochet into the 12th stitch, you should have a total of 78 stitches in the round. Then just move your yarn marker up, and then you're just gonna make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So two rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around and then come back. After you finish your two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch over and then one single crochet into each of the next 39 stitches and then come back. So now you should have a single crochet into a total of 40 stitches then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet into every stitch back across. So on the first row you had 40 stitches, the second row you have 39 stitches total. Then when you finish that last stitch you're going to turn your work again and then for the third row you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across. So after finishing the third row you should have 38 stitches and then you're going to turn your work again, make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this fourth row you should have a total of 37 stitches. So each row is decreasing by one stitch so now I have 37 stitches after finishing the fourth row and again you're going to turn again and you're going to keep repeating this until you get to the eighth row and you only have 33 stitches in the row. So now I'm on my fourth row so I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. Actually I might be on the fifth. I've lost count. Let me check. So that was one, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So yeah, I'm on my fifth row. So you're going to keep repeating. And when you get to your eighth row, you should have 33 stitches in the row. So now, this is how your work should look. You can see how you're building up this ridge on one side, which is going to be the brown spot on the back, on top of the back, and then this is the back side of the body. And you should be on your eighth row with only 33 stitches total. And then after you finish that row, you're going to turn your work and make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last two stitches. So leave the last two remaining stitches unworked. So on row 9 I'm leaving the last two stitches unworked and I have 30 total stitches after finishing that row. Then you're just going to turn your work to start row 10 and you're going to start row 10 the same way. You're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet into every stitch leaving the last two stitches unworked and then come back. So now you should only have 27 stitches after finishing row 10. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to repeat this all the way to row 13. But I'm going to go ahead and work it with you. So one single crochet in every stitch except for the last two remaining stitches. So now after finishing row 11 you should have 24 stitches. Then you're going to turn your work again And again, you're going to go one single crochet into the next stitch. And this is row 12. You're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across and leave the last two remaining stitches unworked. So now you should have 21 total stitches after finishing the 12th row. And then for our last row, you're going to turn your work again and one single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch except for the last two remaining stitches. Leave the last two remaining stitches unworked. So now you should have 18 total stitches on that last row. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew this back portion onto the body. And then this is what the back spot looks like now. You can see how you have the little curve that will go on top of the body on both sides. And then this is the right side and the wrong side is where you have your loose yarn end. So now you're going to get your body, the main portion of the body, and we're going to sew the back side onto the main portion of the body. Go ahead and get your craft stuffing and place it into the body. So now I have craft stuffing in the main portion of the body and I'm going to take the back side of the body and you want to line up the bottom circle, portion of the circle, so it's on the opposite side of where we made the rows, the angled rows. So you want that to go on top of the body. So the part that you're going to line up is the opposite side on the bottom of the body. And you want to place the right sides together and you want to center it. So you can fold, you want to center it. So you can fold this portion in half, the brown portion in half to find the center. And then once you find the center, you want to put the right sides together. So this is the right side of the back of the body. 
and this is the right side of the main portion of the body and then you have the loose yarn end in here because this is going to fold over onto the body so make sure you have it lined up right and I have the center of the back of the body lined up with the right sides together and then I'm getting the same colored yarn as the back of the body the brown toffee colored yarn on my tapestry needle and then I'm going to go through both stitches the back side of the body as well as the main portion of the body and then you can go ahead and tie a knot so I went ahead and joined with my loose yarn end where I finished off on the body then you just want to stitch both sides of the back side of the body to the main portion of the body so I go back and forth from the center and then I'm going to come back to sew the other portion. So you just go right in and out sewing the back of the body to the main portion of the body. And when you come back you'll see how much of it I've sewn in place. So I sewed half of it. Here is where I started and I sewed half of the back side of the body until we get to the rows that will go fold on top of the body and now I'm going to leave this yarn for now I'm going to get a new yarn and start from the other side so now I'm going to get a new brown colored yarn I'm going to come back to this one so I'm leaving this yarn to come back to and getting some more yarn on my tapestry needle so now I'm going to come back to the center where I first started and then join my yarn to sew the other portion of the body. So I'm just going to tie a knot here to secure it. And then I'm just going to fold the body, the back of the body, line it, line it up until you reach the next edge where we created the rows and just kind of fold the back of the body to line it up with the main portion of the body sewing the two pieces together. So now I finished sewing all around the bottom. You can take and fold the back of the body up and now you can add more craft stuffing to fill in the back of the body. So now you want to add more stuffing into the back of the body. Then after you finish placing more stuffing into the back of the body until it's completely filled, you can fold the back of the body up on top so that area where we made the rows for the spot will go on top of the body and then you can sew that portion in place. So this is what it looks like. I just folded it right on top and then I'm going to take my tapestry needle and finish sewing the spot in place. So make sure the body is stuffed with the amount of stuffing that you want and then just take your tapestry needle and then you just sew the spot down onto the body. So this is how mine looks after I finished sewing it in place and the portion where you fold it on top of the body this is going to be the top of the body on the dock so you want to make sure that you have that lined up properly for when you sew on the head because you want the spot to be even on both sides in the back of the body now you want to make sure you have plenty of stuffing in the head and put your tapestry needle on the long end that you left for sewing on the head or use your white colored yarn and then you're going to take and position the head on the front of the body and you want to make sure that the spot is on top facing up and, and is looks 
symmetrical on both sides and then you're going to line up the front of the body with the, the front of the head or the neck and you also want to make sure that you keep the nose straight so you want the face facing straight and I usually use the magic circle on the front of the body to line up the nose and make sure that the face is looking straight then when you have everything lined up you can take your tapestry needle and then you're just going to go right into the neck portion and the body portion and then come right back up the first round that you make around the neck and the body is just to hold the head in position so you're constantly just kind of checking and making sure that your nose is facing straight and that the body is straight and then you're just going in and out so I just came out of the head so I'm going to go back in about a stitch over back into the body and then back up through the body and back up through the neck and then you just keep stitching that way and repositioning the head all the way around and like I said this first round is just for positioning the head so you're going to make several rounds as you sew and position the head in place and then you just go a stitch over back down into the body and then back up through the neck of the head and bring the yarn through and if you lose grip of the head or the body you can just reposition it before you start sewing again. So now this is the second time sewing around my head. Now if your head falls forward, you can pull it back by taking the back panel of the head and then creating a little bit of a wrinkle and then you can sew that wrinkle down if you need want to hold the head a little bit straighter. And so I just keep going in and then out the fold of the, the back panel and then that keeps the head straight so that's a little trick that you can use too and then of course you just add yarn whenever you need to I've already added some yarn and I usually add the yarn in the back of the head and then leave long loose yarn ends so I can bury the loose yarn ends and then I continue making several rounds until the head is completely secure. Now for the loose yarn ends after I tie my knot I just go in right where I tied the knot and you come out anywhere on the head and then just pull the loose yarn end through and then you just trim the loose yarn end. Then, after you finish securing the head, we can make the legs. So you can go ahead and set this aside, the body and the head aside, while we make the legs. So the legs are all made the same way, and you're going to need four of them, and you're going to just need your white yarn to make them. So we're going to start with the magic circle. Just take your white yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, and hold in place your pinky and your thumb and then just take your crochet hook and you're going to bring up a loop and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a, sl a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So we've done this before. And then you're going to close the magic circle and then turn your work and just like we've done before you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round so two single crochet into every stitch around so now you should have 12 stitches in the round and we're going to continue making increase rounds so now you know how to make the increase rounds so we're going to be increasing all the way to one single crochet into six stitches and two single crochet into the seventh stitch 
So again, just like we've done before, you're going to start with one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around then one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around and then one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch so go ahead finish making all of your increase rounds you're going to stop when you get to one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch so now after you finished all of your increase rounds you should have 48 stitches in the round so you can go ahead and move the yarn marker up and for this next round you're only going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around for only one round and then come back. So now after you finish that round go ahead and move the yarn marker up and we're going to make the front portion of the paw. So now you're going to take and make 14 single crochet two stitches together. So I'm going to make the first couple with you go into the next stitch bring up a loop, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for one single crochet, two stitches together. And we need a total of 14. So I'm going to make a couple more with you, go into the next stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet, two stitches together. So that's my second. and my third and you need to make a total of 14 and then come back. So now you should have a total of 14 single crochet two stitches together and this is how my work looks so far. Then you're just going to make one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker to complete this round. So now you should have a total of 34 stitches in the round and this is what my work looks like so far. Then you're just going to take and move up the yarn marker to where you left off and then you're going to make one round of only one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around for one round and then come back. So now go ahead and move your yarn marker up and this time you're going to make seven single crochet two stitches together. So seven single crochet two stitches together and then make one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches. So seven single crochet two stitches together and then one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches to complete the round. So now this is what your work should look like. You can see how you have a really nice out pouching for the foot. Then you should have 27 stitches in the round remaining. You're going to move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for 22 rounds. So 22 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish your 22 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around you can go ahead and take your craft stuffing and stuff the paw. So after you finish stuffing the paw this is what mine looks like. Then you can go ahead and close. So you're going to take your crochet hook go right where you left off and then you're going to place your yarn marker right where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together and then you're going to repeat that pattern 
all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. So go ahead and finish repeating this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then when I'm almost back to the yarn marker I have two remaining stitches just place one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches and then move your yarn marker up and you can see how the hole is going to get gradually get smaller and smaller as you close so for the next decrease round you're just going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then just place one single crochet into any remaining stitches move your yarn marker up and then for this decrease round you're just going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together repeat that pattern all the way around and you can add more craft stuffing too as you need to then you can see how you're almost closed and I added just a little bit more craft stuffing now I'm just going to slip stitch close so I'm going to skip a stitch go into the next stitch then I'm going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch and I'm going to repeat this all the way around until the leg is closed so I'm just making slip stitches all the way around and then this is my last slip stitch then I'm going to go ahead and finish off just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work then you can just take your tapestry needle put it right onto that loose yarn end and then you just go right where you finished off and come out anywhere on the leg and then pull the loose yarn end through then you can take and trim the loose yarn end and then you have your finished leg you need four of these so go ahead finish making four of them so now you should have all four feet completed go ahead and take two of them and we're going to get ready to sew them onto the dog so you're going to need your tapestry needle or your upholstery needle like I said the tapestry needle is a lot more difficult with a larger dog so I recommend using the upholstery needle but you'll have to be very careful to keep this away from children but just to get your white colored yarn and you're going to put a lot of the yarn onto the upholstery needle and you want a lot because I usually go through twice with the yarn and that just for me it just really secures the legs onto the dog so then after you have your yarn your white yarn on your needle you're going to go make sure that your paws face forward you want them facing forward when you put them onto the dog so always pay attention to where the paw is and you're going to go through the top of the leg and I usually go about three rounds down from the top and I go right through the side of the leg and I come out on the opposite side at exactly the same level so you want to come out on the opposite side at the same level and then just bring the yarn through and you want to leave a long loose yarn end so it doesn't come go into the leg you want it to so you can tie a knot and bury a loose yarn in then you're going to line up the paw with the front of the body so I usually use the head as a landmark and then I line up the leg with the side of the body and I want to line it up fairly close to the front of the body and then I usually go about halfway on the body and so I can look and see where the yarn would enter the body so the yarns coming out of the leg here and then position the leg where you want it find out where the entrance is on the body and then you just take your needle 
and you go right through the body and then you go out on the opposite side at the same level. So you can see I'm coming out on the opposite side at the same level. And then I usually leave about one to two inches of yarn between the one leg and the body. Then you're ready to get the other leg. And then you just go through and again you're paying attention that the paws facing forward and then you go through the top of the leg and then come out on the opposite side at the same level and then you just pull the yarn through and again I leave about one to two inches between the body and the leg. Then you're just going to go back through and I usually go about a stitch over and you want to be careful not to cross your yarn. So you want to be careful that you don't cross the yarn or go through the other yarn strands. And then you just want to come out one stitch over or under as long as you're about a stitch away from where you went in and then you just go right back through the body a stitch over from where you exited and then I come out on the opposite side a stitch over from where I went in the body and then just bring the yarn all, all the way through leaving about one to two inches between the other leg and body so here you can see I have about one to two inches and then you go back through the other leg about a stitch over so now you can see I went through the body and both legs and then I exited out a stitch over from where I went in and then you're going to repeat the whole process one more time then you can see this is how my work looks then you're going to take the two loose yarn ends and you're going to pull on them and you're going to pull and cinch the legs against the body. Now, if you, you can pull both strands, but if you meet any resistance, you should let go and then pull one yarn strand at a time until the legs are completely cinched against the body the way you want them. I always double check and make sure that the yarn, there's no strands coiled between the arm and the body, and mine isn't, so mine is completely cinched to the body and again it's very easy to snap your yarn so you only want to pull on one strand at a time if you meet any resistance. Then once you're happy with how you cinch the legs against the body you can go ahead and tie a knot Then you can take your tapestry needle and then place it onto the loose yarn end. Go in right where you tied your knot and then come out on the opposite side anywhere and then just give a gentle tug on the loose yarn end and then go ahead and trim the loose yarn end. Then the front legs are movable and attached. So now you just want to attach the back legs the exact same way. Now when you're attaching the back legs, it's very important to not only have the paw facing forward, but you also want the back leg to be in line with the dimple on the front leg. And this is about where I'm going in for mine. So now I just wanted to show you how I positioned my legs and you can see how I made them even so the dimples are even on the leg also your dog should be able to stand and the paws are all facing forward this is what it looks like from behind so now you can set the dog aside we're going to make the tail so for the tail you're going to start with your white colored yarn 
and we're going to start with the magic circle. So now you should be a pro at your magic circle. And you're going to bring a slip knot up first, and then six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're just going to close the, the magic circle, turn your work, and this time you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. Go ahead and place your yarn marker if you need to. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And as you're crocheting, turn your work so that the loose yarn end is on the inside and you can give the loose yarn in a gentle tug if you need to close up the tip of the tail. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds, and then come back. So after you finish two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and remove your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. We're going to make one increase round. So for the increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So now you should have nine stitches in the round. I just tucked my loose yarn end into the inside and trimmed it. Then just take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds and then come back. Then, after you finish two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and move the yarn marker up for an increase round. So for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that pattern. Whoops, sorry about that. You're going to repeat that pattern, so one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for five rounds. So five rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish five rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you're ready to bring in the toffee colored yarn. And you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker. And then with the white loop still on the crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop with the toffee colored yarn and then just take and tie a knot and then you can cut the white colored yarn. Then you're ready to crochet with the toffee colored yarn. Now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. And you can tuck your loose yarn ends into the inside of the tail. And we're going to add craft stuffing later. So you just make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of eight rounds. So eight rounds of one single crochet 
in every stitch around. Then after you finish your eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail on the back of the dog. So now you can go ahead and add a little craft stuffing into the tail. So this is how mine looks after I put a little craft stuffing in. So I just put a little bit in and I didn't really worry about putting any into the tip. And now your tail is ready to sew onto the back of the dog. So now you just want to center the tail on the back of the dog and then just take your tapestry needle and go in and out along the base of the tail. Make sure that your tail is centered on the back of the dog and isn't crooked. And then you just go in and out all around the base of the tail, sewing it to the body. So this is what the tail looks like after I've sewn it on. Now we're going to make the spots. So I made two different style of spots. I'm going to show you the first style now. You just take your toffee colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around the crochet hook and then make a chain of 11. I'm just going to show you four on video tutorial. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11 and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 11, then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So just take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. So now I have one stitch left and I'm going to make three single crochet into that last stitch and as I make the three single crochet I'm going to turn my work so that I can work on the opposite side and I'm also going behind my loose yarn end to bury it as I crochet. So I just made three single crochet into that last stitch and now on the opposite side you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch and then come back. So for mine, after I finish making three single crochet into the last stitch, I have about 22 stitches in the round. I'm going to take my yarn marker, place it right where I left off, and then you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch until you reach the opposite end. So one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the opposite end and then come back. So you can see that I made one single crochet in each stitch and I've reached the opposite end. So you can see that I have one stitch on the end. So I'm going to make one single crochet into the next stitch and then that will bring me to the stitch on the end. And on the stitch on the end you want to place two single crochet into that stitch. So you're going to make two single crochet into the stitch on the end. And then you're just going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches except for the last stitch before the yarn marker. In the last stitch before the yarn marker you want to make two single crochet into the same stitch. So this is how my work looks so far. 
Then you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the spot onto the dog. So you can make as many of these spots as you want for your dog. So I'm just making one and now I'm going to show you the other style that I made for the second spot. So for the other spot you're going to start with the magic circle and you're going to start with the slip knot and then place six single crochet into the magic circle just like we've done before. And then you're just going to close up the magic circle. And then you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet in every stitch around. Then just take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and then we're just going to make one increase round. So you make one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then just make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to sew the spot onto the dog. So you can make as many of these spots as you want to place on your dog. I just made two in the, these different styles. And then this is how much yarn that I have left over after finishing the one dog. So you only need one skein. So this is what mine looks like after sewing on the spots. And you can put them anywhere you want to. Now I'm going to show you how to make the dog collar and the bone name tag.